Yeah, Hickok 45, gonna be a good day. It's a compound, 1911 time, 45 ACP. Let's just shoot a couple more. <laughs> nice. That was more than a couple, but that's okay. Yes, Dan Wesson, 1911. I have never shot one until recently, till I shot this one. Pretty cool gun. We appreciate CZ sending it to us to TNE. I'm going to throw a lot of 230 grain slugs through it and uh, just see how it works, okay? Nice gun. Let's go back up to the shooting table. It's a little chilly out here. It's about 40 degrees, a little cooler than it is on the other side of the computer where you are, I'll bet, right? We've been talking to Bud's Gun Shop about getting the range heated, but I don't know. They're just not going to come through, it looks like. But, but Okay, what else do we have here? We have another one, don't we? What's better than one 1911? Two 1911s, okay? Yes, yeah, got both the uh, stainless V-Bob version and we have the, uh, the blackened uh, standard uh, full-size version. So again, thanks to, to CZ, you know, who owns Dan Wesson, for sending these to try out. I, I've had uh, quite a few requests, and hopefully this will satisfy you Dan Wesson people. <laughs> Actually, I, I just a little bit there. I, I wanted to try them out sometime. I have picked them up in uh, gun shops or in gun shows a couple of times, and I thought, whoa. Dan Wesson? What do I know or need to know about Dan Wesson? That thing feels really good and awfully solid. And I have since learned uh, a lot about Dan Wesson over the years that they are highly regarded. They really are. Now, isn't that a beautiful sight? Look at that ammo. <laughs> Speaking of help and sponsors, we appreciate uh, Federal Furnishing, that all that pretty turn 30 grain ball ammo. But, uh, uh, so I got two of them, got both, got this thing. Now this is the Valor. This is kind of the flagship. And uh, it comes in this finish, this black finish, and then also stainless, of course. And uh, and this isn't just a paint. Uh, you know, if you read their, their website and everything, I'll link you to it. But uh, it's, it's a, I forget what they call it. It's, it's some kind of fancy name like everybody has for their finish on their revolvers or their, their 1911s or whatever firearm they have. But it's not so much painted on there as it is a, kind of an impregnation of the metal and bonded and all that kind of thing. So it's supposed to be really good stuff. Okay, that's the bottom line. And I kind of believe them. Uh, I, I'm sure it'll scratch, but I... I I tend to to, uh, to believe that it is probably a really good finish. I, the reason I say probably is I've not carried a Dan Wesson uh, through battle or for 20 years, and so I have no personal experience with that and how much wear it will take, you know, this particular finish. But uh, they just do things right. They make uh, good firearms. <laughs> they really do. So I'm sure they got their finish in order there. Pretty cool. I'll tell you one thing I like about them. I'll shoot some more here. But one thing I, I noticed right away with these is, well, you notice it. Look at the gun. Uh, you got the Valor on there, but you don't have a lot of stuff on it. You don't have, uh, we, they make some models, I think, with the rails and all that. But, you know, you don't have the rails. You don't have forward uh, serrations. Uh, you've got... It's just stuff you need. It's like my Ed Brown. This gun very is much like my Cobra Carry, isn't it? Very much like it. Uh, same uh, philosophy, it looks like, except I like the, the checkering better on this. You get a really good grip on that. That's 25 lines per inch, I think, and it's really nice. You can have greasy hands, boy, and pick that thing up, and it, it's going to lock in. So that's kind of nice. But, uh, you know, it breaks down. It comes apart easily. Uh, unlike some new premium firearms, uh, it's, it's, it's tight, but not overly tight is the way I would, I guess, say it. So, look at that. I don't even have to load a magazine. Oh, I have one loaded. Let's just pick up a couple of these. Yeah, big old slugs. And I've got a variety of magazines. I don't know. They, uh, they come with a couple of Checkmate magazines, which I think are supposed to be good magazines. And uh, so we've got those in the mix. And, uh, and I've just gotten a bunch of stuff. Chip McCormick's. And my, uh, uh, I think there's an Ed Brown or two in there. And there's uh, what's there, uh, Wilson Combat. So hopefully we won't have any trouble. Okay. That we can't trace <laughs> to something, you know. All right, so I've shot this thing. I haven't had any trouble with it yet. Uh, so you never know, 1911s can be finicky. 
What should I shoot? Why don't we just wake up the gong right away? Yeah. He shouldn't be able to sleep on this chilly day. All right, let's try a red plate before I get too cold to shoot. Right. Nice. Let's try the buffalo. All right, whopped him in the butt, it looks like. I think I'll knock something over now. I like to see things fall occasionally, you know, do some destruction. knock a ram two with one shot scared the second one over yeah empty and it's only probably 1911 you know seven or eight rounds and you're finished but that's okay they are big bullets aren't they? Uh, cowboy what do you think <laughs> okay. too fast sights are right on can't complain about that. They're right on. Let's work on some. Oh, there's a target. Yeah, let's see where the sights are. I'll hold it right in the middle and probably miss the whole paper. Okay, sights seem uh, pretty good shape. I mean, you know, I'm shaking around, of course. All right. Pot smoking time. <laughs> oh, I definitely don't want to spray myself today like we did the other day. <clears throat> Too chilly for that. Oh, nice. <laughs> Boy, I oh, know that one didn't hold the slide back. Man, that's an old one. I don't know who made that. They're afraid to put their name on it. That, oh, that goes back to my competition days. You know, 20 years ago. I, think. I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, this thing uh, shoots well. Uh, I shouldn't have gotten it so hot. Uh, I don't know how hot it is. But like I say, one, I tell you what, these, these firearms, uh, let me give you a little information about them. They're 1911s. Is that enough? They, uh, I don't know everything about them. I do know this, I like that. You can just take it apart, okay? New gun, and uh, it's not so stiff that you have to beat on it with a, or get a bushing wrench out and all that. It does not have a full length guide rod. Another thing I like about them, you know, it's just like the Cobra Carry. In fact, I've heard these referred to as kind of a, a cheaper or a poor man's Ed Brown or whatever, you know? Of course, poor man's has, bad connotations but these are not cheap <laughs> okay they're seventeen hundred to two thousand dollars so so they are uh, not cheap for folks that are not familiar with them yeah let me go ahead and get that out of the way they are uh, in the upper echelon of 1911s so you're talking you know close to two thousand dollars in that, that vicinity so why would they be that expensive well of course you know a lot of 1911s are pretty expensive these have some of the key questions you might have if you don't know about these they have no MIM parts, okay? Look that up if you don't know what it is. Uh, the injection, molded parts and things. They're tool steel. The parts are, every, everything on these are, from what I've read, they're hand fitted, polished, and they're put together. They're, they're referred to as semi-custom guns. Because they're, they're almost up there with like the Ed Browns, Les Bears, and Wilson Combats and all those. And uh, they're very, very close. Very, very, very close. Uh, for my money, they're probably close enough. You know, if I got one of these and uh, and it was reliable, you know, I mean, they're they're good, good stuff. Now, the one difference with Dan Wesson, they don't necessarily make every part themselves, like you know, the, your, a lot of your custom gun makers. But I, in doing my research and reading, uh, it looks like they're continually making more and more of the parts on the firearm to the point now where it looked to me like I was browsing around the 1911forum.com and read some some threads on on the Dan Wessons and in fact somebody from the company had posted on there and was uh, mentioning things that they make and and don't make and all that 
it looked like about everything now is made by them except I think maybe the mainspring housing and maybe the bushing is uh, uh, Evolution Gunworks. Uh, but, and, and I think that the button, but just about everything is made by them now. Uh, if you know something different there, you know, share it. The sites used to, were Heine and they look just like that. The, the ledge site is called that, you know, it doesn't have Heine on it anymore. So I don't know if, uh, maybe Dan Wesson's actually making that site now. I don't know. They're Trigicon sites or that's just a full blown Trigicon, uh, offering. I'm not sure. I don't know all the sites they do offer, but, uh, it may just be the Trigicon insert, you know, because they are night sights. All right. So, anyway, uh, nice guns made mostly in house and uh, tool steel, all hand fitted. So, semi custom is right. Thought I had a Glock, didn't I? Put my barrel in from up there. Uh, old habits die hard. But uh, fits together okay. Sure, as I say that, I won't be able to get it back together. But it's been a, a pleasure to take apart. Uh, I've shot it, cleaned it a couple of times, and it's uh, gone back together easily for me until, of course, when the camera starts rolling, then is when you start struggling and things don't fit or, you know, whatever, right? But we can deal with that. I can make up some lame excuse, blame it on the cold weather. Okay. There we go. 1911s, they don't come apart and go back together quite as simply as you know, a lot of our modern pistols. I like that, uh, that bushing, it's, it's kind of neat. That uh, thing is really thick there. Gun just feels well made, it really does. I, 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 I should be looking for some things that I hate about it. I, uh, I, I don't like the grips, the thinness of the grips, particularly those are VZ grips and they're they're uh, highly sought after, you know, they're not cheap and they're very desirable they have a great uh, traction on them and uh, a lot of gun makers brag about having those on their firearm because they're thin extra thin and probably if you have short hands or small hands you'd like that but they're a little thin for me okay a little thin you notice uh, the sights uh, the, a little bit different I don't know if you'd like that or not I, uh, I think I could, it could grow on me it's just got one dot back there and a big dot up front so yeah, nice sights. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. So a little different there. So let's throw a couple more. I bet it's a loud gun, so I'll put my ears in. All right. Always fun to sl to sling heavy lead. At least for me. Works for me. I see another ram standing over there, so. He didn't get scared down, did he? Yeah. <laughs> he actually had to have 230 grains of lead. Let me try the uh, turkey over there. All right. Whew. Well, I guess you would never let me forget it if I didn't try the chicken, right? Okay, great little shooter. <laughs> A little cinder action there. Let's take a couple of shots. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, now what I do? You hung up on that round. It's a magazine or what I've got here. You know, let's just try it. I don't know, that, oh, I see what, that magazine has a floor plate that is wedged it up against the front of the, uh, if you can see that, got the safety on there. Uh, that's supposed to go up in the firearm instead of in the front of it like that. That's another one of those old, okay. I'll, I'll blame that on the magazine because I've got the magazine there incorrectly. I'll see if I can empty it and get it out of there. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, that weird little lip just doesn't uh, seem to, to fit right. Okay, so we'll we'll blame lay that one through the mag. All right. Now I forgot what I was going to do. Something stupid, probably. Let's just shoot. <laughs> I got a magazine right here. Put another one in. Let's try while we're at it. Uh, let's try to empty one here pretty pretty quickly. See how the uh, trigger is for that. I'll try not to hit the uh, target. I'll try to hit the drum. All right. Let's see if it's got a full auto switch on it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, that's as full auto as I can get. <laughs> You know what I should do? I hate to do it, but I should take a couple shots with this one too, I guess, shouldn't I? Oh man. Nice, nice features. Uh, flat mainspring housing, long trigger. These are things I like on a 1911. That's for sure. Uh, that's pretty good. I've got, to, I've got to try this gun too. I probably should use that magazine, but we'll just put one in here. All right, now this one I've not shot. I just, uh, I wasn't going to shoot it. I was just going to show you the other type they sent it to but you know they got match uh match grade uh materials you see the match barrel uh just they are well-made firearms there's no doubt about it you can you can look around uh it's hard to find anything really negative on them i'm sure it's out there okay let's see i don't even know where this one hits but let's uh let's go ahead and put one on the gong sure feels good Okay. Try that red plate. Right, low. Oops, still a little bit low. Well, that thing feels good with full grip. They always do. Wasn't holding up high enough. Let's try that little soft drink there. <laughs> Wounded him. Ooh, just a hair of the right, I saw it. That one feels good too. Just had to get it dirty, didn't I? Oh man. I asked him to send me this because I, you know, I was more interested in a carry size gun. But uh, I was glad they sent both of these. Uh, 1911s are just wonderful firearms, and especially these higher, higher quality ones are, are just fun. They're nice to, to fire. The checkering, uh, for one thing, most 1911s tend to work. You can get one for four or five hundred dollars, probably serve you, and probably work. But there's some things you can you can do. I'm freezing out here. There are things you can do though that do make them nice. This uh, this checkering when you pick it up. No matter how well your $400 1911 is, is working for you, and no matter how well you can shoot it, if you pick up that gun, and you're gonna you're gonna want it, you're gonna want the checkering at least, the beaver tail and everything. It just feels like a million bucks. Your hands lock into it. Uh, it's just hard to describe if you've not felt one like that. It's it's really uh, it's nice. If you that is if you like and can appreciate a 1911. Some people don't like them, right? but uh, that's okay as I've said before I don't necessarily carry one but uh, they're fun to shoot and they're great guns and uh, I have carried them and uh, occasionally I still do wonderful wonderful pistols and these are works of art you know especially when you get to this level no doubt about it the Valor Dan Wesson uh, again we appreciate CZ sending the things they're uh, uh, I almost had forgotten really that CZ owned Dan Wesson, but it's, it's neat that they, they do because CZ's quality outfit and uh, they've got some really nice 1911s, you know, in, in house. Uh, and I don't know if I forgot to tell you anything that I know about them. I don't know everything about them except that they are well made. They're, uh, they're all you know, made of steel, hand fitted, and semi custom to the nth degree. So very, very close. Uh, 
a lot of Dan Wesson owners would probably argue that they're just as good as, as those custom guns. I'm sure they would. It's because I read a lot of that stuff online. And uh, it's a cool gun. The Valor, great gun. Uh, 1911, anytime you can throw those big slugs, it can't be a bad day, even if it's a little bit chilly. Life is good.